you crazy mother looks good. The East Rose podcast. All right, cool. Are you listening? Yes. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to the podcast. This is the East Rose podcast. I'm Tony, and I'm here with my partner. You know who it is. That's Steve Rinaldi. How you doing? I'm back. How are you? All right. <laughs> hey, I got one thing I want to get get clear real quick. Oh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, open up another Facebook page or something like that for Steve Rinaldi so that I can stop getting all the messages where everybody wants to find out <laughs> where Steve where Steve gonna be at where Steve gonna be at. So we're gonna start posting that stuff. We appreciate that we're growing. It's just a lot of extra work for me, so I'm going to make sure that you can find Steve. We'll figure out a way, and we'll, we'll, we'll announce that uh, probably Thanks the for all the time. inboxes, Mom. I yeah. appreciate yeah. it. I love yeah. you so much, yeah. Mom. Thank you. All right, so listen, we got to get right into this because uh, I should have wore a tie today because, you know, we're, we're, we're classing this thing up now. we got an amazing <laughs> guest. we got an amazing guest. i got to thank, thank Steve for bringing her in. You've seen her on The View. You've seen her all up and down the East Coast. New York, Jersey. Well, you're a Jersey girl. Let's just get to it. Happy to know who I'm talking about anyway. (laughs) This is Latisse. Latisse, welcome. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Me me and Latisse can talk now. Yes, we can talk. I'm finding when, when, now that we're having a lot of the comedians from the Philadelphia Mm -hmm. scene come in, when we start getting into these great conversations and I'm, and like, I gotta stop. I'm like, stop. Don't answer that. <laughs> Let's wait till the Let's footage is going. Let's save it. Let's you know, save it so for the show. We can actually talk. Right. How you doing? I'm doing well. Looking I'm, great as thank always. Thank you. Appreciate it. Had a show it. tonight at Atlantic City Comedy Club. I did. Club. Yeah. I, which I, one of my favorite clubs, Atlantic City Comedy Club over there in Claridge. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah I love it. Great club. Yeah. Great club. Mm-hmm. Thank um, you. You know, how did you, uh, how did you get her to say yes to coming in? <laughs> That's a, I, I, I literally for, sent me a message and I was like, yeah. He didn't know you something? I mean, you, you don't know him something? <laughs> uh, nope. an- another mentor yeah. and a great friend and hilarious. Oh, Always takes you. time to talk, yeah. provide advice, and, uh, again, a very notable face in the yeah. Philadelphia comedy yeah. scene. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank yes. you. I don't, it's weird when I hear people say stuff like that because I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't realize the magnitude, but yeah. um, it's great that we're actually recording this um, tonight because tomorrow is my 11th anniversary of wow. comedy. Yeah, oh, so I had 11 yeah. years. Yeah. 11 yeah. years. Thank you. Yes. So I'm super excited about that. It's a very weird and interesting story on how I even felt. I, I say I fell into comedy because um, I w- it was not on my radar at all. It was um, it was very interesting. I um, in 2008, in December of 2008, for my birthday, I went to go see a show in Atlantic City, actually at the uh, at the Comedy Stop, which isn't even at the Tropicana anymore. Um, it was a friend of mine who apparently had been doing comedy for like five or six years at that point. But we graduated high school together and I didn't know she was doing stand up. And it was oh. like, oh, my God, I have to go see her. By accident, she was. on. Yeah, oh, she was wow. like lit- like she had been working like and I was like, oh, my God. So I realized she was going to be there. I go. Show was great. And after the show, there was another comedian who you know very well, Coleman Green. Shout oh, out to Coleman man. Green. What up, Coleman? Um, and we, after the show, we're just sitting around like this. And he just was like, you're funny. You should get on stage. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, what do you, I, I didn't even know what that meant. Like, what do you mean get on stage? And he was like, we're going to take you to an open mic. And I was like, again, foreign language. Like, yeah. I don't understand. He was like, well, put five minutes together. And, and I'm looking at him like five minutes of what? <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, he goes, you have to write. He was like, you have to write something out and then you'll perform it. Well, you put your name on the list. And so all of that crazy stuff that normally like pops in your mind and then it's gone. I started to like write this stuff down and I was yeah. like, let me see what I can talk about. And so it took like maybe about a month, but literally January 14, 2009, went on a Wednesday night to the Comedy Cabaret in Northeast Philly. One of my and, break inspired. Right. Too. That was my <laughs> first time I stepped on stage. And I was like, OK, so you sign up, you know, and they call your name. And Pat O'Donnell was hosting the, yeah, the yeah, mic that Pat, night. Man. Love Pat. And um, I got up there and I could not believe that people were actually laughing at stuff I wrote. Yeah. I was like, is this what it is? And it was the best feeling. And they actually let me go a little longer than five minutes because I was with the like Coleman and they all knew him and he was an established comedian. And they were like, so they just let me go. 
And after I got off the stage, they were like, I think you did like eight minutes and like had the crowd going. And when Pat got back up, he was like, Latiz, is this right? This is the first time you ever stepped on stage to do stand. I was like, yeah. He was like, give her another round of applause. Wow. Right. So I was like, wow. So I just kept going back. So every week. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that's like, it's the best <laughs> drug. It's the best drug. So. I kept going back and in lieu of that, I had already signed up for Brad Traxman's class. We talked about that. Right. So I knew I was starting that and uh, went back, went back. And I want to say like maybe the, by the third week, the comedian I went to go see at the trop, she tells me that um, the owner, Al, um, you know, Al Scarpati, Andy, Andy, Andy excuse me. Andy, I'm like, yeah, this Andy. is Andy Scarpati. Yeah. You ain't getting I'm like, now. right. <laughs> yeah, please. Like, uh, I don't know why I like I saw an A in my mind. Like, I, Andy. Yes. Yeah. So um, she said he emailed her and was like, um, I heard about your friend uh, Latisse. Oh, Would she wow, be interested in doing a guest spot? in Doylestown. Now the Doylestown club is the bigger club. It's on top of Poco's wow. restaurant, right? So I'm yeah. like, sure. So um she was like, I'm gonna send you his email, you can correspond. Anyway, fast forward, it turned out he was asking me to do a guest spot on February fourteenth, was it which was exactly a month after I had stepped on stage on Valentine's night to a sold out crowd wow. on a Saturday night and I did five minutes and I was like this is the best feeling ever. And I killed it like for a wow. newbie, like five minutes. I remember talking about the bathroom and how small the bathroom was and how, and just some of my material and it, it rocked it. And I wow. was just like, I just don't want to stop doing this. And I was already in Brad's class by that time. And I remember telling the class like, Hey, I'm going to do a guest spot. And they were all like, yay, like yeah. all excited yeah. for me. And yeah, I just never looked back. And by May of um, 2009, I started going up to New York and doing mics up there and meeting people. And my first show in New York was uh, at Broadway Comedy Club with Jeff Lawrence and like August of 2009. And I just was like, I love this. Yeah. I don't so you, ever want to stop. You got into a routine pretty quick. Yes. Because what yeah. I was saying to Latisse when she walked in is like, when I when I started, I don't remember seeing her around much, but it's because she became a working comic quicker than most Quick, people yeah. starting out. You know, yeah, because you said by the, 2012. Yeah, I was already in. Pro, what what month did you hit? Like in 2012, I, I started in in January. I think, okay, January or February. Okay, so yeah, by 2012, yeah, I was I was actually I was I was hosting shows in New York. I uh, I was one of the first females and probably only female to ever host Jamie Roberts show at New wow. York Comedy Club oh, and wow. Seymour Swan. He ran a um the midnight show, The Sisters of Comedy, and I will never forget when he asked me to host and I was like, "Are you sure?" Like I was like two and a half, three years in and I was like they were letting me host. Wow. And that's what I did for years. I wow. loved it. I always hosted. So, and it's interesting because I was telling people if you want to get good at the host yeah, host yeah. as much I'm, as you can i am feature right now yes so yeah it, that's the thing to do right. and then there was only like two clubs that i remember the first two clubs that moved me from host to feature was sarcasm which was uh steve trevelisse he had a room in cherry oh, hill yeah, yeah and then um the comedy cove in springfield yeah and that's gene and his wife um laura lorelei um yeah and they moved me from host to feature and I, that was like the biggest wow. thing ever but yeah i hosted a lot and i hosted at catch a rising star early too wow yeah wow you were working comic your first year yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. well you know what it's like yeah, thank you you know there are people and there's actually a lot of people that are great at something because it wasn't what they were looking to do it's amazing <laughs> Isn't you know that crazy it really is i, I mean you know is. there's i know people that have really done amazing things mm -hmm. In something that people have tried their whole life to do, yeah. and they just were a natural at it, and they and they they weren't seeking it out, but they just were, they just right. had it. You know I what, fell you, into yeah. it. You know what I'm curious? Yeah. Now that I, I'm in this for for almost a decade, yeah. Did you cre did you ca catch any any heat from people that were in it a little longer, for hitting so quickly like for, for get, getting work as quickly as you did? I, like you, you know if how I deal did, with that sometimes. Yeah, if I did, I didn't really notice it because I was like, I had, I guess, created my own thing, yeah. and I was always like, I just wanted to learn as much as I could. So once I got into the New York scene, and and met Jeff Lawrence, he started. I knew Jeff before he even started Laughing Buddha. Oh, so wow. and he would do like workshops. So I got to meet um 
Frank Santa Padre, who was like an amazing comedy writer. Yeah. He's he's ghost written for a lot of professional comedians. And he I don't know if I should say this, but in the class, he actually let us know that he helped Chris Rock do his, one of his first HBO specials, wow. Bigger and Blacker. Wow. Mm-hmm. And I learned so much from him. And it was literally like one of those like three or four hour workshops. But um, the thing that Frank taught was that our sets have to be like like a story where you create a uh, a beginning a middle and an yeah, end and yeah. it flows and i learned that and it's like you you know your closer has to be that big crescendo that's the like and um so once you learn like okay the beginning you're literally introducing yourself to the audience every time you step on stage within those first two you know two minutes at best it's like every time we perform they need to know something about they you or they're not going to yeah. care. They have right. to connect. And a lot of comedians don't understand that. What um, What's interesting now is that I'm actually teaching. I've been teaching in, in Philly at um, Lamar, Philly. Lamar Im- told yeah, yeah, yeah. Philly Improv Theater. And uh, so I teach stand-up for adults and kids. But what I like to tell them is that you may get sick of your, your routine, but what you need to realize is that you're in front of a different audience every time you step on stage. They yeah. don't know you from the set you did last night. They don't yeah. know you from last week. So if you remember that, you literally are reintroducing yourself every time you get on stage. And the material sometimes changes just a little bit, mm-hmm. and you improve on it, and you say yes. to yourself, like, I got a bigger laugh. Why did they get a bigger laugh? Yes. And you know what? That's why you, you know, you're right. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you know, a set works and it evolves. Yes. And sometimes it just keeps on growing. Sometimes another great bit comes from your all old the time, yeah. all the time. And also, um, it's so important to like record yourself, even if it's just audio, because yeah, you that's say what we were stuff talking, yeah. like off the cuff. Okay. So that you, you yeah. might not. So Lamar know. Todd just mm-hmm. told us that uh, so the other true. night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I, you know, it makes so much sense, doesn't yes. it? It's it like, does. It does. Yeah. It helps a lot. But I was I was fortunate to meet so many people and and grab nuggets from everyone that it really helped me early on. How'd you get the view? Um. Well, that was crazy because one of my friends, um, Terry Canastrasi, who doesn't do stand up anymore, but we met early early on. I think we were in the same Brad class actually. So yeah, she Brad, started Brad, around the same by time. By the way, we're talking about classes. Be- Brad Trackman. B- before before <laughs> the uh, we started with the podcast. We were mentioning the to Tony that we both yeah. took comedy classes yeah, we in do. Philadelphia. One being uh, Toure Gordon's right. and Keith from Up the Block. Yes. Now I was a part of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, one was Brad Trackman. Yes. I took both. Did you take I both? I take both too. And, yeah. you know, people bash comedy classes because they think, how can you learn? How can you learn to you be learn funny? Yeah. But, but that's not, not the even case. that. And Latisse is teaching and mm-hmm. instructing now. There's just a way that you could tell people mm-hmm. your story and how to go about well this. you yes. just you just kind of broke that down you almost taught us just now a little mm-hmm. something about you know the way a, a joke is laid out yeah. you know uh so but, but even if her- you don't know that you need people like yourself who have done it and yeah. who, you know who who's respected in the in the comedy scene you. you know you have to i mean thank goodness you want to teach someone because I you know do. you can say to yourself look you know this is my craft. I'm doing it, <laughs> you know. No, but that's I like not to what the, to share. that's not what yeah. the Philly and Jersey comedy scenes about anyway. Right. I mean, they're all together on this, yeah. you know. So right. it's, it's a so great true. scene, and it's it's an amazing. I mean, we say it all the time, but we know, uh, you know, Philly comedy is like you, you hear it all the time. Uh, Phil- Philadelphia comedians are just like a whole nother level, and yeah. I think people need to introduce themselves to what's going on in Philly no doubt. instead of going so you know happening. to New York no come over to Philly and see what's happening because there's lot. some amazing it's a lot yeah, you, you, some you, of the you, biggest comics that have come out in the past what decade or at least mm-hmm. half half a decade they're Philly comics no yes. i mean big 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 mm-hmm. comics yeah you know it's, it's a an great, amazing scene we have a great community yes and it's funny because i'm a south jersey girl born and raised but i'm close to philly so i started in philly i'm literally like 20 minutes outside we're, of center city we're in south philly i'm, I'm in i'm, I'm not, in south, south jersey. jersey in marlton oh okay right? yeah, yeah but i grew up in in south jersey all over like i've lived in uh laurel springs i've lived in sickleville i've lived in lindenwald yeah uh, which is where Derek Gaines is from as oh, well cool. yeah 
um lived down the shore and at before i even started doing stand-up i used to work at the casino so i've done yeah, a lot even before that now. yeah <laughs> i want to make sure we so, get to that yeah. story about the view though because oh, we started yeah, it and we didn't about yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> that's all right yeah um so the view so terry what i was saying was she actually sent me a message or an email or something and said hey she found it they were looking for funny women and she's like you should you should email it send them a clip and i was like eh, whatever like and i was just like okay because she and literally it. <laughs> threw it like I, but i threw it away like i had totally yeah. forgotten about it and i want to say that had to have been um 2012 that was like maybe september of 2012 yeah or maybe yeah so by the beginning of like the end of october Somebody reached out to me from the view and I was like, no way. One of their wow. executive producers, like, and wow. I was like, what? He was like, yeah, we saw your, your video and we want you. And I was like, want me for what? <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you talking about? And they were like, we want to feature you on like, and we want to bring you in. Like they sent me a car. I had my own driver that wow. day. It was amazing. Nice. Yeah, it was amazing. And you know, taken home i had my own green room had my name on it and everything it was such a surreal day but like i said i'll never forget it because actually the anniversary just passed so um it was uh november 14th 2012 yeah and every time i say that i'm like i can't even believe it's been like now seven years yeah. since then and then when i think about it because i'm like yeah i was literally like three and a half years in when i did that Crazy. live and it was the most amazing day. And of course, nothing beats like finishing that. You're coming upstairs, the elevator doors open and Whoopi Goldberg comes out of the, the, the room from watching you. And she comes over to me and was like, girl, you are funny. Yeah. And like touched my arm. And now we're talking behind the stage and everybody's like around us. The producer that was assigned to me was taking pictures of us and everything and got to take a, a nice picture with her. But she was like, and then the best part, she's like trying to recite my joke back. Like, what was that one about yeah. the cul-de-sac? And I'm like, oh my god like this is not happening yeah. right now and then she invited me back to her her dressing room Whoa. i was like what <laughs> like no so she was like go get your things you know Three and then years in, around, we're talking yeah about. and I, I was like what, what? from this is there's no right or wrong path really what i'm that's like, it everybody drills in your head hey eight years in five years in ten years in twelve there's this no... is when this stuff happened you know, when we'll an opportunity know. comes, Success. you know, you, uh, you know, it was one you weren't sure if you were going to take. Right. But when you do, you have to take it serious. You have right. to kill it that's or try mean. your best. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. I mean, you never know if it's something's so the right way to go. Right. But wherever you are, you got to give it your all. I yeah. saw that. He sent it to me. You, you were the phenomenal oh my God. on that. On that. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, absolutely phenomenal. There was like you an applause look... break, and I was like, y'all, and I'm, yeah. in my mind, I'm like, I only have 90 seconds. Like, yeah. chill. Like, yeah. You know what, I'm listen. Like, how much 90 time, seconds. How much did you have then? What? How much time did you have? Probably, um, I don't material. know, maybe 15 minutes or so. Wow. And the crazy part was before they even went live, we did a run through. And I did one set and they were like, yeah, we need you to change everything about what you just did. And I literally like changed it minutes wow. before the show actually aired. And I went on at the end, but everything was, um, it wasn't like the whole week had been set up. Now I was there. It was a Thursday for me, but there were people Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then there was somebody who was going to be on Friday. All the ladies before me had like this whole like, oh, they had pictures and there was like a buildup. Well, the day I was on the gadget guy, you know, the gadget guy that does all those things and yeah. then they give it away to the audience. Yeah. He ran over his time. So when it was my turn, I was like, well, they were like, well, we got to put you on stage. You're already going to be on stage with Elizabeth. There's no pre video. We just got to go right to you. So that's why I was already on stage. And Elizabeth, if you notice, she's like, she's and this is yeah. Latisse, take yeah. it away latisse and i'm like Damn. all right and i go right into it yeah. i literally had 90 seconds wow yeah. a minute and a half and there was an applause break and i'm like what the hell wow like it was crazy did your family, it was awesome. did your family come out no they couldn't oh, it was okay. so early in the morning and you know they it's literally live so but the the car that they sent came at like what seven o'clock in the morning we go into new york and they're like okay and and you like did your first everything nooner. right you know, i'm like a what a nooner is yeah. like daytime yes. comedy yeah yes. usually hell gigs 
Right. Oh, yeah. so being like yes. one of the best experiences of her career. The best. I'm so, laughing because it's like, no I, one likes to do comedy during the day. Right, right. But I love it. I love yeah, yeah. it. I've done baby showers too during the day too, like after that. But I'm so... Remember, I mentioned Frank Santa Padre, right? I had done a workshop with him earlier. In right. It. So I get to the view. Who do I see in the damn hallway? Frank Santa Frank. Padre. He's like, L, what are you doing? He calls me L. I feel so Hollywood. He calls <laughs> yeah. me L. L, oh my God, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm on today. I'm performing. He was like, no. He was like, like proud papa. He was like, oh my God. Because he remembered me from his workshops. And I was like, yeah, I'm on. He was like, I'm so proud of you, right? So after everything, I rode up in the elevator with him and Sherry Shepard and Mario Cantone. And they were like praising me like, geez, you did so well and this and that. I was wow. like, oh my God. Like, I couldn't believe any of this was happening. Took pictures with them. Yeah. But like I said, then we get out, the elevator's open, and then I see Whoopi. And I was like, okay, uh. I'm going to die right now. I'm going to die. So wait, I have to tell you, when I finally went to her um, dressing room, um, I, I got my stuff. And the producer that was assigned to me, he was like, all right, T's, so nice meeting you. Good luck with everything. But I'm going to show you where Whoopi is. It'll come around. So I had, we had to go around the corner and like down the hallway and then down another little hallway. Go in. And her dressing room, literally from floor to ceiling, shelves all the way around of just shoes <laughs> her whole dressing room shoes and i'm looking around like wow now a few years back every day she would showcase a different shoe that was the thing yeah. like and that's what she did she was like this is made by so and so but all of those shoes were in her dressing room oh i was God. like this is crazy so we sat down and did she, she just you, did you were you allowed to take a pair no yeah right uh, so she just on, like so she's really like asking me like so how long you've been doing i know right <laughs> spare pair. like so she's asking me like how long you've been doing it what are you up to this and that and so we're talking and her her manager was there and it was just one of the best days so then my car was like ready for me we go and then i get to finally get to my phone and i see all the facebook posts everybody's yeah. tagging me congratulations like i'm crying in the car like just joy wow. like tears of joy and it was so crazy we're getting off the turnpike now you know i'm in south jersey so exit four shout yeah. out to exit four <laughs> exit four we come off my phone rings and I don't recognize the number. I answer it. It's Whoopi Goldberg's manager. Oh my God. And I'm like, hello. And he's like, Hey, let's I know we just talked, but, um, we're really, um, we're really interested in having you open for Whoopi. I was like, what? Like oh it was dead gosh. silent. Like I was like, no, he was like, okay, I know you're still in the car. When you get home, give me a call back when you get situated. I was like, I don't. So I'm like talking to the driver, like, you can't believe this? This is this is this happened. He was like, that's amazing. What like he's all hyped, I'll... right? So let me tell you what happened though. So I get home, we're talking, all trying to get all the logistics together, and so they decided, okay, Whoopi has a, a show at the NJ um, in Newark at the NJ Pack. We want you to come and open for her there. So I was like, great, give me the date and everything. Now at the same time, in 2012, she was on that show. I don't know if you ever watched it. Um. Um, six 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 Park Avenue. Do you remember uh, that? It was I think about I remember the, it. I like the yeah. haunted hotel in New York, and yeah. she was doing that. She was like a reoccurring character. Okay. So, um, what happened was then there ended up being a filming um conflict, and that show was canceled. A couple of her shows uh, actually on her tour that she was doing was canceled. So then they were like, they forgot all about me. They're like, ah, it's canceled. Uh, she has to film in, you know, wherever they were going in New York yeah, or whatever. So and so it is, it really is because <laughs> yeah. then it never happened. And I was just like, now she's not even with the same management. Yeah. And, and because when she came to, um, Valley Forge uh, a few years back and I was like oh I should see if so I emailed the guy because I still had all his information we co corresponded and he was like oh Latiz it's so good to hear from you but I'm not even with Whoopi anymore she's with so and so Man, I think she's I with I um, wish I knew this story yeah. a month ago are you she, serious she performed at my casino shut up gambled in my area ah, of course of well course. now you know I, I mean she'll be I back could have been like I hey Latiz right yeah. over here right come over I would have <laughs> ran over there, remember man. Latisse? She's right. right down oh, the road. She does. God. Even Sherry Shepard yeah. remember me from years later. She yeah. gave you a guest spot that I night. I wish. Oh, but I, lo I still love Whoopi to death. But yeah, it never, it never happened. Wow. Yeah. What a great story. I know it is. I was like, oh, I was so close. Yeah. I feel like in my career, I've always been like this close to stuff. 
after the view. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's so weird. Did you, yeah. did you get any other work out of it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah, did. Yeah. But, you know, nothing, you know, everybody would love to then do more TV, right. you right. know. Yeah. And I think now, like I said, going into my 11th year, I feel like now I'm ready. Like everybody's talking about Netflix now or Comedy Central. And I'm, yeah. and I see a lot of my friends, like literally the same women that I was doing, like the Sisters of Comedy in New York Comedy Club. Um, Yamanika Saunders, Khalees Hawkins, all of them, Phoebe Robinson. I, we were all on the same stage doing these same exact shows, the same exact mics in New York. Wow. And now I'm looking at them on TV and I'm like, okay, does this mean it's close for me? It, it has is. to be close. It's like, it, it does feels mean like it's, close. it's this. It does mean it's close. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For I'm sure. hoping, but you know, it is what it is. So I'm just like, I got to keep, keep moving, yeah. keep plugging That's along. That's what it is, right? Yeah. You now you, keep um, yes. You're a mom, right? I am a mom. How many kids? Three. Oh my. I I know it's insane. <laughs> how do you, how do you I talk juggle about that, that comedy and your three kids? Well, it's kind of easy now. My daughter is the oldest, right? So she's actually just turned twenty eight. She's grown. Oh yeah, right? she's she's on so, her own, right? So I have the two boys at home, as uh, thirteen and then four. Oh and boy. I talk about that. I know, right? People are like, you're crazy. I'm like, I know. <laughs> the, the dynamic is so wild, but I actually I, I love it. Twenty eight. Yes. 13. Yes. And, and four. four. Yeah. He'll actually be five on the 15th of wow. this month. Yeah. I oh, can't believe awesome. it. I have yeah. a five year old and he's the terror. He yeah. is the terror. <laughs> I talk about him a lot. How do you, do you think you're a different mom at, at, at this stage of your life? Definitely. Uh, yeah. Cause you know, I'm I ready have, to like kill him. I have two kids. <laughs> we had some trouble. We had trouble having children. Okay. So, uh, my first I had at 40. My okay. second I had at 44. Okay. Almost 45. So I'm a 48 year old yeah. man with a five year old. Hey, that's, so. that's, that's, that's. Uh, but I'll tell you something. Um, I think that they are so much better off to have this father mm-hmm. than who I would have been at 21. You know? <laughs> I know. I mean, and you don't know that until you've been 21 and you're made all the mistakes. Yeah, right, right. Listening to this, yeah. right. Yeah. Right. Listening to this. Right. So right. that's why. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, no, you're so that's good. why. You know, no, that's why. Good. That's Just, to me. I always want to know people's perspective when you have a child. You know, uh, what people would say was like when you're all done and then you have another one. Yes, that's uh, how it I, I was. I think you're great at it, though. Thank you. Well, for Kayla, it was like I was the hip mom, right? Yeah. So I was the young mom. I was, oh, yeah. the, you know, I was at every cheerleading practice. I'm teaching the girls. I'm doing the routines with them and stuff. And then it was like then when <laughs> 15 years later, <laughs> then I have my son. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, it was a totally, total different dynamic because I was actually a single parent with my, my daughter until i met my husband and she was like about 13 when we started dating or whatever and i didn't have my son until she was probably like 15 almost 16 which was perfect timing because i always say that kept her away from (laughs) getting mixed up because i was like um yeah you don't want to do this i amplified every (laughs) prenatal pain every (laughs) every (laughs) i was like oh this hurts you don't want to be pregnant you don't want to do this no you don't want this you and, see what um, mom's going through? Yeah, you go exactly. Through <laughs> so she was like, I don't want any kids. I was like, good. Yeah. And I'm still not a grandma yet. Yeah. And I'm not. <laughs> now you're like, to go now you think, did I go too far? Hell no. Know. Nah. <laughs> I always tell people, listen, I'm not a ma'am. I'm a damn. Okay. Yeah. See, <laughs> the, the thing with you is, though, you know, you're going to be a grandma where you have to, like, uh, make appointments to see because uh-huh. you're very busy. So Thank it's you. Like, you know. And I'll be like, don't think you're dropping them off for yeah. too long. Right. <laughs> no, I'm not right. doing it. Mama's got a job. Exactly. Oh, and I great. don't want to be home. So yeah. we are out. But yeah, so I but I love the dynamic though. It's really yeah. good because Kayla was so much older, it was like everybody was their own child like the single child, the only child. Yeah. It's like literally I had a kid a kid each decade that yeah. I was able to have one. That That's is that scary. is amazing. Yeah. Really. When you look at it that way, that is the perfect. In some ways it's the perfect. Some ways, way. yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like they they have different needs. So yeah. it was like she's good, one and then group, I could right, and then, and then I could take her. To, I've always like been amazed at the people that have like these kids and they're like stair steps. They're oh. like, yeah, G, you know, Jason's five, yeah. Melissa's four, and the know, twins Toby's are three, are one. right? And yeah. the twins like get the fuck out of here! Like, what are you doing? Yo, I can't. No, thank you. No, uh, and they all have the same letter name. <laughs> yeah, we're all, we're all Jays. <laughs> we're all Jays. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, I mean, you know what? And and they're usually the ones on the outside. They look like the perfect family, right? Know. You know, everybody. 
you say to yourself, like, how can they like at, schedule everything the way they do? How can they, you know, they're all dressed the same. They, I know. they never miss a Christmas card and <laughs> right. stuff like that. But really, inside, they're like ready to pull their hair out. Right. You know, it's like, a, listen, I'm, I'm real. You know, it's tough. I'm 48. <laughs> I got two tough. little kids. Yes. I'm not going to kid you. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it's not easy. Tough. At times. And look, I am not that Betty Crocker mom. You done got the wrong one. I have friends, though, that always be like the arts and crafts and yeah. the shit. They want to invite me. Okay, sure. Yeah. And I, I'd let my I'll son. I'll, I'll drop my kids off. Sure. I'm like, but you will not be doing Easter egg coloring at my yeah. house. It is just not that yeah. way with me. How do, how do you find the time to do it all? That's because, what because what's crazy do. is like I'm I'm like you. I'm I'm I people say where are you based right now? I say I, I live in Jersey, but I do the Philadelphia comedy yeah. scene, Atlantic City. I'm in New York You're all, all the over. Time. You have to be every time I'm in the Philly or Atlantic City <laughs> area. I'm somewhere else. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, she's there. She's there, <laughs> or, or there. she's in the city I was at yeah. last night. Right, right. That's and so she's true. a great mother and a great comic. Well, I'm thank like, you. does it get easier? Or do you get it accustomed? It does to it? get easier. Well, here was the thing because with my daughter being an adult she was living she was still in the house for a little bit so in her 20s it was easy because we would all tag team help, so yeah. between her and my husband right. everybody had to know everyone's schedule where is everybody doing so that's what we did like there's a big calendar in the kitchen right. this is my schedule I fill in all my dates and then everybody knows what's happening it's a team yeah. effort it it's is a team, a team effort you parent, have to have a team effort. team effort yes so it, it's literally like changing of the guards because I'm home during the day so I'm with the kids. Yeah. Like I was able see with Kayla, I wasn't a stay at home mom. I was a single parent. I was working. I had to. Right. Then when I met my husband, he's like, oh, no, if we want to have a kid. Let you can stay home. I'm going to do this. OK, cool. <laughs> I'd never experienced that before. And I was like, I was a PTA mom. Yeah. I'm joining mommy groups and shit. <laughs> like I was like president oh, of geez, the I Mocha Moms. I, I promise you, I was Mocha Moms. Yo, this it's a real thing. And <laughs> I um I would talk about that sometimes. But, yeah, when Mitchell was little, like two, three, four. I was in the mommy groups and I was doing all that and then running and doing comedy yeah. at night. So I was like, all right. So my husband, by the time he gets home, five, six o'clock, I'm out. Wow. That's my and time. You're teaching yeah. now. Now and I am teaching. teaching. Yeah. For the last two years, I've been teaching now. So that I love that because that helps too. And then it forces me because now I'm already in the city and then I'll hit a mic before I go home. After yeah. I teach. Tell, yeah. Tell them where you teach. Uh, oh, I'm at, um, wanna... at fit which uh stands for uh philly improv theater and um yeah they have everything so before they've only they only had like improv that was the original thing they've yeah. added acting they have sketch writing and they've added stand-up to their curriculum and right now i'm really excited about this because i'm working on a 201 curriculum and so 201 is going to focus on um hosting crowd work and then show production as a whole wow. and yeah for the adults so and the the classes for the adults are six weeks and then the kids run eight weeks yeah. but it's amazing wow. i absolutely love it and it's it, it's fun to be able to share my knowledge and like i say you never stop growing so all of the things that i've learned over the last 11 years basically i put that into my class and because i've experienced things on stage that a lot of people wouldn't understand either so i'm able to translate that into uh, teaching yeah wow. Wow, that's I awesome. absolutely love it. I wanted to get something in real quick. Mm. Uh, you know, we were all friends of uh, Chris Cotton. Yes. And uh, we uh, we wanted to make sure that people know how to get the official the official Chris Cotton T-shirt. Yes. They're pressed by the family, by Erica, his loving wife. Yes. And all the proceeds are going to his family and, more importantly, to Baby Blue, who's due in February. I and know. I cannot wait I can't to hold wait. that baby. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, yeah. I'm so excited. But uh, so we'll put it up on the screen. Those are the, uh, the shirts. You'll remember that uh, Chris used to wear the shirt with all ordered, the icons I ordered, right? yes. I ordered mine did you yeah yeah I, I gotta, have to I get I have to get ours. mine yeah. and then we're yep. like, uh, yeah and uh, so you know they have them in, in, in uh, women's sizes they have them in men's sizes they're amazing shirts they're great shirts and I think they're going to be around forever because you know what uh, those, they, first of all they're a great design but you know what? Chris Cotton meant so much to the Philly comedy scene. And so many that, people uh, all over. You know, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, he touched so many people. He did. And, uh, you know, it's just, I see him around the city, and when I see him, it's almost like you want to go over and hug the people that are wearing them. It's like, I you know. know those people <laughs> yeah. without knowing them. And that's what Chris did for people. I mean, you know, he was just, he was an amazing guy, you know. So, and the other thing was, I want to make sure that, you know, people, if you, you know, get a chance to go over right. to chriscotton.com, mm -hmm. and you can get uh, Chris's book. 
This what is uh, what my dad did. Dad did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a great read, and I you know, my son I have copy. to. Get yeah, it. yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. I have a great um, Chris Cotton story because actually, like, oh, when I love to hear it. When I first started, I knew I knew Chris before there was a Center City comedy in mm-hmm. Philly, right? So when we were all on the scene and going to Raven Lounge every Thursday, that was a spot. Yeah, it still, it, is. It still, is. still and is, and it's it's even bigger now. But I remember when they started Center City Comedy. So it was Chris Cotton, it was Conrad Roth, um, H Foley, um, and then of course Tom Cassidy, and then Tommy Papa which is Tommy Pope now. And that funny yeah. story of how he had to change his name because once he got more famous, there was already a Tom Papa, uh, an established comedian. So they made him change his name to Pope. But we all knew him as Tommy Papa. Yeah. And so that's my guy. And now you can turn on the TV and see him. He's got that Wentz commercial oh, going on and the Cure um, insurance oh, yeah. commercial. Yeah, he's amazing. But like everybody, um, and of course, Monroe Martin. So... um we all that was the, that was the spot Thursday night. That's where we were. And then um, funny story, though, when I first started going up to New York in like May of 2009, I started telling everybody, yeah, I'm going up to New York to do, you know, open mics or whatever. I'm meeting, you know, comics. Everyone in Philly looked at me like I had 12 heads. They were yeah. like, are you fucking crazy? Latisse? Like, why are you going up there? I'm like, because I was like, there's bad comics everywhere, right? Everybody's at an open mic. Like yeah. we're all doing the same thing. And it was like, it was so foreign to them. Like, Oh, you're crazy. Why are you going up there? And I'm like, I just want to change the pace. And I started meeting all these people and networking. And then like, I want to say probably after um, maybe 2013, because I stepped away from like the Philly scene right. for a minute. And that's how I ended up taking two race class because I was like, let me introduce myself back into it. And I wanted to get back in front of him because he knew me when I first started. And he used to like put me up. I don't know if you ever remember. No, because you came in at 2012. But him and B flat used to do this like happy hour comedy show at Helium. And it would be like five, six o'clock in the evening. And he would put me up like I would do guest spots for them sometimes. Two Ray. Too right. right. Okay. But um Chris, like we were all in the trenches together. So um and Jack Martin too. You you did you ever meet Jack Martin? No, no, that name he, don't ring a bell. Right. Yeah. So he he like dipped out, but everybody was it was such a tight knit like thing. Everybody yeah. knew. And I think at that time, I'm I wanna say like Raven Lounge was like the only Mike and there might have been like a Monday because what they started to do was they started to expand. So that's how Center City Comedy started. They started at Raven and then they started to branch out. So right. then there were other nights of the week. And then there was like this little spot, like this little taco place um in Center City too, where they were like on a Monday night, they started a mic there. And then like all these places started popping up. Then R2 and all this other place. I was like, yo, they're yeah. they're growing. Chris, Chris yeah. yeah. Hustle, it was amazing. He, he created the you know what? Yeah. You know what I see a lot like I notice with a lot of you comics mm-hmm. is that you love the open mic scene. Mm-hmm. It seems like you look for them. But like if you're yeah. bored, you're like, you know what? I think I want to go find an open you mic. Gotta be in I heard Chris to. say it a thousand times. To. I heard you say it tonight. I've mm-hmm. heard you say it. I think Lamar mentioned it. You know, every comic that I know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they they just they love the open mic. You the have opportunity to. to go because I do. I equivalent it, to, uh, equivalent, uh, whatever. I can't even yeah. talk. Um, equate it. You know what I mean. I equate it to yeah. that. I was trying to say equivalent and yeah, equate the at the same time. Yeah. Like I made I a whole new words, word. All the time. Right. Yeah. But <laughs> I I use that analogy uh, as going to the gym. It's literally like us working out. Yeah. You have to work out your jokes because um, some people who may not be actually getting booked on shows, that's their outlet. And for us as more working comedians, it's literally like, let me just try this out. See if this works. Yeah. Or Latisse, just stay in the trenches. A, I, was, I, was, I was watching a podcast on YouTube similar to this. They were yeah. saying that Bill Burr, who's one of the top comics in the country, yeah. this summer was walking in Hollywood and walked by a Hooters and someone was barking a comedy show. Right. And he said, can I go up? Yeah, the guy barking didn't know who he was, and Shut he did like up. twenty minutes in a Hooters. Oh That's my god! <laughs> right, because we that, need that, that perspective. Yeah. We never that. changes. Well, that you know what, and that's probably something changes. that you know. So, when you get to that level, it's nice to for somebody to not know who you are. Mm-hmm. Maybe the crowd's going to know, Honestly, but you say to yourself, you know what, you go out there, right? You know, mm-hmm. and uh, I mean, you know, it's 
it probably was a great, you know, a great experience for him too mm-hmm. to have that happen. You know, and I'm sure they figured out who he was after a while. But, you know. <laughs> well, Sign well, Chris, when he came back to Philly, no one could believe how many mics he was doing. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he was that all over the place. At, it was yeah. just crazy. You, you have know? to so, because I mean, he was also used to doing that in New York. New York is even ten times more than yeah. what we do in Philly, only because everything is so on top of everything. Yeah, you can literally like jump on a train and do like four mics in, in one in night area. Yeah. yeah in new york as opposed to like one or two in philly That's yeah it's growing Chicago more in philly too. yeah it is yeah. growing but early it's on it's huge in philly now you know yeah the thing is too though philly comics it's crazy they can you could plop them anywhere mm-hmm. and they kill it they always do they go they go to new york and you know it's like no. they're killing it in new york mm-hmm. right. they'll go to chicago they're killing it in chicago yeah you know it's just you know they they really uh I don't know what it is, man. It it's just works with everybody. Yeah, it does. I think it's the versatility, and because it, there's so much that happens in this area. Yeah, I hear, uh, unfortunately, sometimes when New York comics go outside of the city, they're so used to their like subway material, yeah. or it's very confined, so it doesn't point. always translate. When they go out to the Midwest yeah. or when they come, you know, go down to Florida, nobody's riding a subway. So it's like you have to branch out your material. Right. You you're have exposed to, be more to some of the rural areas where yes. you're exposed to the city. You're yes. exposed to all these. So, you know, mm-hmm. you're taking in a lot more of, you know, what people's lives are Every day. than if you're, you know, in, a, in, 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 you know, the city yeah. and you just stay there the whole time in New York yeah. City. But that's the key about saying, oh, you know that it's about relatability. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Now, yeah, but, relatability. But, you know Butch Bradley? Yes. Butch, Butch uh, he's based in Vegas now. He was a Jersey yeah, guy. Yeah, he's at the Hideaway. He right, had his right. spot. He had a Jersey mm-hmm. club in the Atlantic City area. Now he's out in Vegas. He's got a comedy yeah. club in Vegas. That's awesome. He's based in L.A. for a while. But Butch told me this a while back. He's like, I'm like, Butch, I really don't want to do the road. It's just, it's a grind. You break even at my level. Right. He's like, Steve, you got to do the, you got to do the road. Got to get out there. You got to do the road because mm-hmm. it's just like you said. Yeah. The subway material ain't gonna work in Florida. Yeah. yeah. So you right. g- you got to find that universal act, mm-hmm. that universal set. So true. You, you know yeah. that's what's great too about you know, a lot of comics now. You know they they've embraced the podcast mm-hmm. like this one, yes. right? You know uh, they've embraced that because they realize that you're bringing yourself. You said something earlier, in, very in the beginning, where you know the the people need to know who you are, right? You need mm-hmm. those few minutes, right? And then they start to to just kind of they feel a connection with you, and yes. then your jokes are even resonate that much even better. More. They resonate yeah, more, right? Definitely. And um, you know, but that's what happens. Like you know, that's why I think these podcasts and things like that work is because look at you tonight. You're not here telling jokes all night, right. and trying to make you know. Here you are being Latisse, the Latisse yeah. that a lot of people don't get to see or get right. to know. And uh, the same thing's happening with Steve. You know, since we've had, you know, since we've been doing this with Steve, I mean, I mentioned a lot of people are asking about Steve. Of course. Who they wouldn't have, ask well, about yeah, Steve? Yeah, Look at yeah. him. Yeah. So, yeah. Look at his face. <laughs> I'm not going to uh, lie. When yeah. I first saw Steve, I was like, okay, uh, he could get it. He yeah, could get it. Yeah, this better not be a Zoom up. Yeah. Like, when you edit this shit, you better not be a Zoom up. He could get it. He could get it. Yeah. Uh, he's so cute. Look you know, at him. Um, you know, I'm... <laughs> I'm here too, you know. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right, Tony. I do see you, but you're, you you yeah. know what? We're surrounded uh, yeah. by family pictures. Yeah, you're a family know, man. Like I'm not gonna come into your house and just disrespect your family like that. Good I excuse. mean, come Good on, excuse. you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, but it know. is fun. So, like, I mean, look at what we're doing now. I mean, you right. know, it's. Isn't it nice? I mean, you get an opportunity to just be yourself, you know, and just have a good time. I like podcasting. <laughs> now that I'm doing it, it's like because. You know how many funny nights we have like this? Yeah. Where we're just sitting around. And it's not joke telling. It's just a friendly conversation. This is what it's all about. Like getting on stage and killing. It's a whole nother animal. It's part of it. But like we all, the the Philly, Jersey, New York comedy, Mm -hmm. it's a very dysfunctional family. Yes. (laughs) Yes. We look forward to drinking, hanging out, watching each Mm -hmm. other's. Sets critiquing each other, yeah. talking about how they may have bombed or missed. <laughs> yeah. it's right. Fine. It's, it's, right. It's, 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 there's so much more than mm-hmm. just the stand up. True. And, and so going true. on the road and, and yeah. doing gigs around like the, the country and stuff, 
I'm sorry. I don't feel like that's as fun. <laughs> yeah. Ain't that it's, weird? Like it is weird. I know what you mean though, because yeah, you're, you're away from a lot of people. Right. Even when, if I go up to New York and you go up to do a show, now I have an hour and a half back home, you're by yourself. And I've talked about this a lot. Stand up comedy is a very lonely place. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. We're on stage by ourselves. And no Biggest matter struggle. how many people come up to us after a show, oh my God, you're so funny. We loved you. You literally, you're leaving by yourself and yeah. you're back in your car by yourself. It's lonely. It can right. be very lonely. Yeah. But see, so, how bad is it mm. at the end of a show when you're waiting for get your money to get yeah. collected? Mm. You had a, a killer set. Right. And you got to wait for them to close out all the tabs. Right. And you're, you're watching Figure the wait staff clean oh my up. Oh, God. And it's an empty comedy club, and you're the only one sitting there. Right. Get paid. That is the most depressing. Yeah. It can be very depressing. That's it's why like, you're supposed to get your money up front. That's, that's right. New comedians get that so cash, I'm get that notes. money up front. I'm taking notes from the vet. Or get paid first. Get that's paid right. first, or what now happens? A lot of PayPal or Venmo. Oh like yeah. Even before. This is it. Like before you get off stage, you come back to your phone, you have a notification like you have money. Yeah, like that's go. what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, so get so your you money my, up front. When you do my show in, in, in March, I'm gonna you want that your money. money. Up front. I'm going to yeah, need that right. money. <laughs> <laughs> PayPal me, that's Cash right. App. That's right. <laughs> that's great. So, do you, so yeah. you know, I wanted to get in. Uh, you, you got some shows coming up. I you do. Wanna plug? Also, because um, we were talking about Chris, the big yeah. punchline. Um, oh, yeah. show on the 26th but i'm doing one actually this week at philly comedy club on thursday the 16th um we're doing another fundraiser for his family I'm on so, it. Yeah, so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. right i together. can't wait so that's gonna be good mel harris me you there's a lot of people lump, on yeah, yeah. lump yep so um that's gonna be exciting and then i'm definitely gonna support the punchline show yeah uh, that, i love that club between, that's gonna be a great show yeah between punchline and helium i like those are my two philly yeah. clubs and then we have all the other <laughs> the punchline show is the 26th yes. and who's going to be on that uh, yeah, a lot of people hosted by yeah. Toure, Toure. Uh, mm-hmm. Foley's on that everybody uh, Tom, Tom Cassidy, Cassidy Derek Gaines coming up Chanel Renee shout out she's the only female who's on that lineup Richie and Redding like, will mm-hmm. be in the building yeah. it's, wow. it's, it's going to be a, wow. yeah it's going to be amazing that's, from, that's a Comedy Central right uh, put yes that together. Comedy yeah. Central that's presents wild, it's yeah. amazing but I that's do that's going to be a great show I do want to talk about the monthly show now actually this is funny how it started i have a show out in montgomeryville pa at stone and key um cellars and um it's a little winery it's amazing oh it's great space and they're they're always great for comedy i know and so this originally started as being like the fifth friday funnies show so on the calendar whatever the fifth friday of any month was that's when we did the show so on average we have maybe four to five shows a year um they just moved it to a monthly show which i'm super excited about they want more which is great more comedy is always good so our first one for the year kicks off um january uh, 17th but it will continue it's always the third friday of the month now so the next big one is february 21st i believe um and that, like I said, Stone and Key Cellars, that's in um, Montgomeryville, PA. It's like 435 Doylestown Road. Um, and we're all on social media, so you guys can follow that or whatever and keep an eye out for the shows. But um, this working first one kicking off, I working know, the day. first one, I'm I have um, Pat on. House headlining. Mel Harris is oh going to feature. God. Oh, Mel is going to be host, there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I always host. And then um, in February, a whole new lineup. Uh, I think Jerry Torres will be headlining. And then um, I have Emily epstein White. Right? she's hilarious she's gonna feature and then of course i'll host all of them but wow. yeah so we're doing a monthly series wow. now so i'm super excited about that plus um you know besides my reg- you know my other bookings i have comedy festivals that i'm hoping to get into again this year for 2020 yeah um i was very i did a lot of comedy I, I have last in 2019 i did five i believe wow. which was good it was amazing i did the dc comedy festival mm-hmm. uh the women in comedy festival which is in boston which yeah. was amazing that's a great show. Um, that was in May. Um, also, the Comics Rock Convention, which act- unfortunately was canceled for this year, but that's out in L.A. And that was a Hope Flood production. That was amazing. But I had done like three years prior. Yeah. Um, Black Girl Giggles. Got to give a shout out to Black Girl Giggles. That's in New Orleans. N- and, oh, really? In yes, New Orleans? Wow. Yeah. And that's in July during Essence Fest. So that's coming up in July of 2020, um, July 1st to the 6th. And like New Orleans is like I'm falling in love with that city. Yeah, um, I went out there for a wedding and I couldn't find any stage time. Are you I was like hitting people up. 
Yeah. I went to one showcase and they canceled it. I got it. So the trick about New Orleans, they have a website called 504comedy.com. It has oh, okay. a list of everything. And they have Damn. comedy every <laughs> night of uh, the week. The it's amazing. Really? It's really blowing up. So I'm actually going to be down there. Check this out. If you're going to be in New Orleans, February 7th. Dope ass show. I'm headlining. Um, it's called Showtime Comedy Series. It's hosted by Shep Kelly. Shout out Shep Kelly. Uh, amazing. She's an amazing comedian who was in the DC area and just moved back to New Orleans. Yeah. And wow. she's already rocking out. Um, she's only been there back, back three months and she's has her own monthly show, uh, at Always Lounge. It's right on St. Claude. Um, all that information is on my website. I have yeah. everything posted. And of course you can get your tickets on Eventbrite, but I'm super excited about this. This show is not like any other comedy comedy show it has a live band y'all really a live band oh, yes nice. well, it's New Orleans, you know, exactly like, yeah. <laughs> so you have the live band you have the comedy and um it's really really comedy a special, and music a special. man they always go together yes, that's a do. good night yes they do so i'm super excited yeah. so that's february 7th i hope um, people are in the area and then um yeah when I'll you fit in, we gotta get. Um, I, know. I know, right? And did you <laughs> notice that she? I it's all in her mind. She the day. like dates, d- oh, like she could tell yeah. you like well, the I time, the date, right. the day, the month. <laughs> I know. Put it in my book. I know. Put it in my book. Yeah, I want to yeah. make sure everybody uh, get your social media too. Yeah, How can they all reach it? Oh, I'm easy to find. So it's Latice Comedy. That's L A T I C E Comedy on everything. Also, I have a new Facebook page. So if you go under Latice Jokes, that's my new Facebook page because I had the the over flow i'm trying yeah. to send people over there but on instagram please check me out um and twitter i tweet so that's fun i'm uh, also on snapchat <laughs> under t's talk yeah so that's just t-i-c-e and snapchat. then talk it you know i go back and forth but i'm on the the main so instagram facebook and twitter you can where, find where do you where do you feel the most uh as far as like, as far as get, getting your voice out there, what's the best social media site right now? For me, probably still Facebook. But what I like to do is you can combine everything. So as soon as I yeah, put something Tony on Instagram, saying, you can shoot it Tony through Twitter saying, and Facebook. Yeah. yeah, you know, cr- yeah, like connect Chris the Cotton always told me he said. Mm-hmm. Uh, Twitter is cr- too creepy after a while. He's like, <laughs> and he, no, but you know, Twitter you though, so much Chris love on Twitter. Say, it's, yeah, yeah. it's so Let funny. Let me tell you what's funny about Twitter. I used to say early on, it, it was like my alter ego. Yeah. And then I was like, no, I'm going to brand it. It's all the same. So it's his comedy. So now I'm like, I'll tweet. And then sometimes if that goes well, then I'll post it on Facebook. Yeah. It used to be the other way around. Yeah. Or I would just be like only Twitter, but I'm trying to get more people over there too. So, you know, that's actually, uh, it's funny that you, that you just said that because yeah. do, do you find that, you know, comics are always trying out material, right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes a tweet, is just trying out a, yes. a little bit of a material and stuff. I know. Do you? Is it scary these days? I mean, do you ever say Somewhat. to yourself like that could come back and be seen? Because you know how easy oh, is it to just culture? say something? Yeah. I mean, I could say something. Anybody could just be talking and say mm-hmm. something, and people can start to break it down mm-hmm. and decide that it means something that you didn't mean. Right. And when that it's happens on print, in normal so conversation. I know. Like, isn't it crazy? With our friends. I'm like, I oh. do not like that. You know. In, we're living in a in a world right now where people want perfection. I got news for all of you, okay? No one. Per, per, perfection doesn't exist. Look how Thank you. It does not exist. He's pointing right. at yeah. the camera. Yeah. Perfection <laughs> yeah. doesn't exist. Take it from the old guy. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This, they won't listen to me anyway because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the old guy. So. <laughs> You're not the old yeah. guy. Yeah. That's hilarious. But no, it's funny. On Twitter, yes, you can try out some jokes. Like I had, I just put up something um, the other day about um, bottomless mimosas. And I was like, you know, I went. <laughs> to Sunday brunch and now I got banned because apparently after you have 10 mimosas <laughs> they didn't mean that I was supposed to be bottomless yeah. they just meant the yeah. mimosas were bottomless and people were like ah you're crazy I'm like uh huh it's a true story and though. then there's somebody out there that's gonna be like did you drive home who drove you home right right yeah. oh my like, god oh my god it's so a true. joke right you yeah know, thankfully like, that didn't happen that yeah, conversation see, didn't see, start but us as comics I got such that's great so advice funny. in September I worked with Paul Verzi I don't know if I you know love Paul, Paul but, yes so Paul Paul did a joke where it, it was a little political, but he didn't pick a side. He just th- referenced something about Trump. Yeah. It was a killer joke, but a guy got pissed off. One guy. And and Paul, the next day we grabbed lunch and he mentions to me, he's like, let me tell you something, man. That one person, he's never going to be a fan. You let him go. Yep. Yeah. He's like, yeah. you, you so got to get to a point as a stand up. He gave me some great advice. He's like, 
you think it, you say it, man. Yeah. That's what we do. That is what we do. As yeah. comedians, you can't, you, you can't really worry about offending nobody. No. The attention's not there. Right. But Latisse, we got to take risks. We do. I mean, of course. Uh, because com- what do they you know, say? If there's no risk, there's no right. reward. Comedians are going to save us from this cancel culture because yes. they're fighting back now. Mm-hmm. And you know what? And they're fighting back and, you know... It's really at this stage when you're fighting back now, mm-hmm. you're kind of one of the first people that are starting to do it. And uh, you don't know what's going to come back at you, but right. it's like, you know, but you know what? You start to realize once you fight back, it's like, hey, wait a minute. Ninety nine point nine percent of people are OK with me. Right. Fighting back. Talk about fighting back. Now, this just think about that as being a woman in stand up. Yeah. There's a whole nother. No <laughs> there's no a whole nother perspective of that because. The bottom line is this is this is a boys club. This is a man's game. So, you know, talent. Oh, of course. right. So I was um, talking to him and he was breaking it down. And he's like, he's a this is the bottom line. It's a man's game. Yeah. Not saying that that means it's good. That's just the reality. So yeah. then you think have of the men to that surrender because they can't right. handle it. Right. But then you have to think about how you move. Well, I have to think about how I move throughout this game. And that's what it is. No and doubt. when you figure that out, it kind of works. But I, but I still see it even as much as w- whatever I've been doing or I am doing, you just have to keep moving forward because I, I cannot, if you start concentrating on the things that you weren't given or weren't given the opportunity to do, you'll kill yourself mm. because your mind will be so consumed with what you don't have. That's the last thing you want to do. You have to appreciate where you've been, what you're doing and continue to want to bring just good comedy. That's why I'm like, wherever I can go, I feel like I want to be able to produce good shows. Yeah. And anytime I get on stage, I always want to be funny. That's my goal. And when I first started in Oh nine, I would say, um, if one person comes up to me after a show, I've, I've done my job that one person started coming up and then it became two and then it became three. And I was like, wow. And you start to appreciate it, but I couldn't get bogged down with who didn't like me. I had to focus on who does like me and keep moving. I did did a similar thing early because in the beginning for me, I I didn't get a lot of paid work. I didn't get a lot of bookings. So the first two, three four years that's what I it was is doing a lot of mics mm-hmm. and a lot of times at these bar shows there there's people listening and there's people not listening right and it, if i just get four people that would listen yep and they l- really listened to what i was doing mm-hmm. and i affected them i seen a smile on their face so they yep. laughed i got something out yeah, of yeah. Of course. obviously it changed as you progress TVs are but on, you gotta people play these talking. games with yourself yes, to you get something out of it yep you know you so. have to you have to change your perspective but i believe that in life anyway not just yeah. with comedy in life you have to stay positive with everything because that you're you're the the vibes that you're giving everybody is energy your energy when yeah. i came in here you were so welcoming and i felt that so it's like I didn't feel uncomfortable at yeah. first. I'm like I don't know where to help, but then I knew <laughs> like like I know this area. But then even with Steve being here, I was like, all right, I know this dude is on the up and up. Yeah. Listen, because as a woman in comedy, I'm just, I'm up, just yeah. like I can't just drive anywhere. I come here. You could have been in a <laughs> yeah. leopard robe, <laughs> like talking about all right, T's, pay your dues. And I'll be like, what the? Wait a minute, where's the podcast? Oh, yeah. Right? Like those are the thoughts, and I'm yeah. like, I have to be careful. I can't put myself in the positions where I'm going to be at a at a disadvantage. So, but knowing Steve, I was like, all right, this is on the up up. Unless Steve was part of it, <laughs> and then it was going to be a gangbang you know, somehow, yeah. the night's or not the over. threesome that <laughs> I was actually <laughs> talking <laughs> about. <laughs> unless, unless you were trying to really give me the threesome that I right. talk about in my set, then I mean, just give me a heads up if it's that's still, what you want to do. Uh, uh, it's still early as far as I'm concerned. Yet, it's so. not over yet. <laughs> when the podcast is over, just know we that's might right. be getting busy yeah. up in here. <laughs> <laughs> I think right now I just love making this guy blush at yeah. any possible chance. It's surpri- I get. You know, it's surprisingly easy to make him <laughs> blush. Know, it's so a easy. kid who looks like this. <laughs> no. I mean, it's amazing. You don't you, understand. <laughs> I admire her so much. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm a fan, and just just to call her a friend is just like. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm awesome. a fan of yours, yeah, no, so that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. 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 When I when I started. 
she was doing so much. Yeah. And, you know, the first time I seen her perform, I was taking a class and she, she Brad Trackman had a class. And what he does is he always puts somebody at the end. Right. That's oh, I closed it out. And has oh, done things. yeah. And she came in and just slayed. Yeah. Oh, You've wow. seen her on The View. And I'm, I'm a comic. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know. And, and from there, right. I, I thought we were friends. But then I seen her three years <laughs> later. I was like, <laughs> do you remember me? Huh? She's like. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just told you friends? that I was playing hard to get. I was just since. playing hard to get, yo. <laughs> since, <laughs> That's what women do sometimes. We lie. He's out for a we drink lie. tonight. Yes, a lot yeah, of you better. Up. Mm-hmm. You better <laughs> take me out for a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Women do know how to deflate you, you know, when you yeah. know it's you like know, cause yeah. he, look, he's, he's easy way, on like, the eyes. Oh, Listen, yeah, I, know yeah, right. I, I know how to play it. I know how to play it because right. this guy right here, I don't want him getting any extra uh, accolades and shit. Yeah. You know, you gotta keep him at a, you know, keep him humble is yeah. what they say, Tony, right? What's going so, on here? <laughs> right. And it's a tape. And and it's a tape. No, we're definitely <laughs> leaving this in. This is gonna be the best part and the possible threesome. I'ma hit everybody up on social media and keep you updated on that <laughs> follow right. the page yeah. follow the page <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure one more time I want to make sure one more time that everybody knows uh, yeah. you know th- this show that you just uh, talked about right. that one so seems like key. one we definitely want to re, t- re-, re- uh, you know mention yes is your show Stone and Key. Yeah, Stone so it's Kate. now it's called um it's called just uh Friday Funnies, uh-huh. right? So it's gonna be the every third Friday of the month. Right. And so the the first one's kicking off January seventeenth and then the next one will be February twenty first. So wherever the third Friday falls, that's when the show yeah. is. And it's at Stone and Key Cellars um in uh, montgomeryville pa at 435 doylestown road cool and you know you can follow me i post everything my website is also uh latissecomedy.com so i have all my dates there too yeah yeah that's it well latisse thanks for coming thanks for yeah. having me you know and this happens to us every time mm-hmm. you know it, it's we could go for hours but you know Batteries. How much time? Right, right. How, How much, much time? time? I know. How much time I'm looking at them like, oh, batteries. I have to come back and we'll what do, do an extended, we extended uh, version. Uh, I need my glasses. <laughs> Me, listen, you see mine over here too. I just didn't have to take them out. <laughs> Where are we at with time? Oh, we're an hour. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we did an hour. Good. Good. Wow, it yeah. goes so fast. That was so easy. Very. I'm telling you. Very. We could do a whole nother yeah. hour, actually. I am so glad you came i'm so glad i love you I, listen me. i was a fan i love you now thank you you were, you were tony was amazing. super excited which yeah. is why i was like yeah he's not trying to rape me or yeah he's yeah <laughs> he's seen on the up and up i was like all right i'm gonna come over <laughs> <laughs> that's right can i call you l now yeah right, oh my god yeah, that would be yeah. dope either l yeah. or t so whatever listen, you want to call you, me you, you know it, it's it's hard to create a, a career with one name right right you but know I, like, and you did doing it, it. so now let's, let's get that let's get it down to one one you letter need to own one letter one letter you know Ooh, what I'm saying? that's a good you know what i need you as yeah. my manager yeah. listen you want to do something <laughs> else i need tony right behind me i that's mean right. not like that but i'm yeah, saying yeah yeah in my <laughs> management capacity <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing drinks with Latisse. Right, yeah. yes we are. All I Good need night, is America. Tito's. All I need is Tito's. <laughs> me out. <laughs> Good job, Steve. Thank you uh, for Always getting Latisse pleasure. in here. Thank Always you again. Let me reach oh, over there. there. Mm, I Thank see those you tattoos. again for coming. Thank yeah, you. I got a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this is the East Rose Podcast. We'll catch you later. The East Rose Podcast. Are you listening? That was really good. Really? I can talk, y'all. I got the gift.